Over the years, I've accumulated a vast collection of references on German armour. I refer to them often when making decisions about my builds, so I thought it would be a good idea to show a handful of those that I've used for this particular build. Here you can see great examples of missing fender sections, light damage to fenders, stowage and the dust that covers every part of these vehicles in the desert. It's important to use references to assist us to develop a story for our own builds as every reference builds a greater understanding. Uh, okay, maybe not this particular one, although that Aussie Bren gun carrier is awesome. So before I move forward, I do need to acknowledge a tiny, tiny error I made in the construction video. I glued two of the turret doors on the incorrect side, which meant these vision slots were facing the wrong way. So a big shout out to one of the channel subscribers, Andy, for pointing this out. Mate, you're a champion, as I may not have picked this up well before progressing onto paint. So before we get to spraying paint, we've actually got an important first step that needs to be completed. Applying a metal primer means our paint will bond strongly to the metal surface of the barrel and the photo etch grills. Look, there's nothing more frustrating than applying a superb paint coat and seeing it chip away with seemingly no effort at all. I'm using Mr. Metal Primer because in my experience, it's never let me down and it's very easy to use. It self levels and doesn't leave brush marks in the paint surface and I haven't found a paint yet that reacts poorly to it. Okay, now we can get started with the painting. I'm going to use Mission Model paints once again for this build as I think their ultra matte finish is definitely going to complement the dusty style of a DAC desert tank. The first step will be to lay down a primer coat and the obvious choice in colour here is red oxide. Not only is it going to assist to colour shift the top coats of RAL 8020 and RAL 7027, but when we chip the paints it will give us the subtle wear that I'm looking for later for the weathering phase. I must say, Looking at this uh, red primer coat here, I'm really happy with this and it's going to set us up for a terrific final paint result. With the road wheels off the vehicle, I'm going to take the opportunity to spray on Mission Models Tire Black. I'm not going to be too fussy about overspray here as this will all be cleaned up with the dust application during the weathering phase and to be honest, a little overspray will just help with some fake shadows anyway. This real life colour photo was my inspiration for most elements in this build as every DAC colour scheme is visible. This is also the point where I explain that the video of me applying the top coat and the sand grail camo scheme didn't work out. So unfortunately I can't show you that stage, but in essence I've used mission model paints and spray them to full opacity as I'm going to do some rather brave weathering techniques with oils. Decals are the next stage. I made a decision early on in this build to use what's in the box, and this includes the nearly 20 year old Tamiya decals. Now, I'm under no illusion here. I know that the adhesive on these decals is likely to be almost non-existent at this point, so I have decal adhesive ready. But that might be a tall order because, as we all know, Tamiya decals of this generation are known for being rather thick. That's thick with a double C. Getting them to set down on matte paint is really asking a lot. So my plan here is to remove the decals from their backing paper, set them through a pool of decal adhesive, apply them, and then use a lot of coats of brush applied setting solution to try to force them to comply. Look, I don't know what's gonna happen there. I do expect some silvering, but I can hopefully correct that with oil paints. Okay, so as you can see, these decals have fought me the whole way. Even after all this work and liberal amounts of Tamiya XF86 flat clear coat sprayed over the top of them using Mission Models thinner, there's still some work in front of me to tidy these up. It's not impossible, but it's certainly not an ideal outcome. In the previous video, I promised to show you a suitable method for painting tools that have been mounted to the model prior to painting. It's really as simple as using a post-it note as a mask. 
And obviously you could also use a plain square of paper, but I just find that post-it notes are a convenient thing to keep in the drawer and pull out when I need them. To paint the tow cables, I'm using Mr. Metal Color Dark Iron. And these metallic pigment paints have the unique ability that they can be burnished to produce a high shine simply by using a brush. Moving around to the individual tools, the process is the same. Using the post-it note, I mask the side adjacent to the tools so I cannot transfer paint to the fender. I'm using the ever popular Cavalry Brown, thin slightly with water so that I end up with a mottled paint effect, because this really helps me replicate the compressed cardboard colour for these wire cutter handles. As I move on to the timber handle tools, I use either Vallejo model colour New Wood or Old Wood. It's perfectly reasonable to assume that tools are swapped or replaced during combat service. So therefore I don't want to paint them all like they're new tools. It just wouldn't be realistic. Now I can move on to painting the stowage items like the water bottles. Here I'll be doing the bulk of the heavy lifting using acrylics. To get a realistic colour for the water bottle covers, I mix the drop of Vallejo Pans Eraser's leather belt with new wood. This process can take a lot of time as it's fiddly and requires a deft touch, but it's also important as these items are in a prominent position on the turret. Even with something as seemingly straightforward as this, subtle application of the darker brown colour over the desert yellow paint of the turret can give us a subtle highlight that improves our results. These will be touched up again afterwards using oil paints to produce a really good final finish. The helmets are similarly in a prominent location and will be a feature that will be worth using some subtle colour variations on. One of the key features in period colour photos is just how many colour variations the Germans used to paint their equipment. Helmets were no exception. Many were initially painted in field grey or dark grey and had to therefore have a field applied desert colour painted on them once troops arrived in North Africa. I'm brush painting some mission model colours which I've used elsewhere to enhance these helmets and they'll later be chipped and burnished so I'm not too concerned at this point about how well I'm going to apply the paint. As long as I don't leave any brush marks I'll be happy with the result. As you saw in the previous video, I'm using some jerry cans in this build. The paint colour palette is very similar to the helmets and the Germans use a great deal of variety of different colours for their equipment. Desert yellow, sand grey, panzer grey etc. I sprayed these in various colours from the Mission Models range and lightly chipped and burnished them. The water carrying jerry cans had a white cross painted on them so that troops could know which ones they were at a quick glance. I painted these using Mission Models Insignia White, which is a yellow toned white and won't look as stark as some fresh white paint. Applied using the stippling method, it shows various wear patterns for that realistic field worn look. Once I do all the weathering effects, these will look like their own little models and fit the scene I have in mind for this kit. It's funny how as modellers, we often leave these elements to the very end of the process and therefore we don't really apply the same amount of attention to them as we do things that we work on earlier in the build. It's like we try to race to the finish line. Well, maybe that's just me, but this time I decided to paint them during the painting phase, which probably makes sense as really all I need to do is paint them. So now we have the model with its basic paint layers in place. I always love the next step, the application of chipping and burnishing of the paint. It's where I can set up the story of this vehicle where I lay down the foundations for the upcoming weathering. 
Now I know some modelers see chipping as part of the weathering process, but to me it's an integral part of the paint application, just like colour modulation would be. It's an interesting phase where the vehicle moves from being an ultra clean factory fresh look to something more akin to a horror movie victim. So we can lay parts bare with worn effects that set the scene for the action yet to come. The principle of chipping and wearing Mission Models paints is the same as walking through a hairspray chipping effect. Just water, a brush and paper towel. Dip the brush in the water, wipe off the water onto the paper towel so the brush feels dry and slowly rub the brush across the paint surface being very patient. You can check out my tutorial on hairspray chipping and I'll leave a link in the comment section down below. The other strength to Mission Models paint is its ability to be burnished by simply rubbing a dry, stiff bristled brush over the paint. This burnishing effect darkens and wears the paint, making it slightly shiny. This important technique adds valuable age to a matte military paint, something that I cannot replicate through any other means. And note, if you apply a clear coat or varnish over the top of this, it will be gone forever. This is a key reason why I don't spray clear coat over the vehicle. Anyway, the value in this approach is that we don't need other paints to apply chips and we can simply chip the paint down to the layer below, which is a perfectly accurate way to chip painted surfaces. The primer coat below is stable as it has the MMP polyurethane additive in it, so therefore it won't be damaged by the water in this process. This is not only a very efficient process, but its results are so pleasing to the eye. I really recommend it. And you know what? You won't have to spend 70 hours chipping your model, so that's a win-win. As you can see, the transformation is very apparent in these images. The model now has a base layer of chipping and burnishing that is consistent with vehicles operating in desert environments. So we can move forward with confidence that our weathering roadmap is now set in place. The painting process for vinyl tracks is very similar to other styles. Apply a base colour, apply rust tones, then stipple on the relevant dust colours and prepare to add on any additional dust tones as the weathering process happens. Simple really. And that's it folks. The next video will go into detail about weathering which is going to focus on dust, dust and you guessed it, dust. So be sure to catch the next build video in a week to see how I'm going to use oil paints to keep the contrast in the paint as well as pump up those dust effects. Big shout out to all my subscribers who have helped me grow the channel so far. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as it really does help YouTube highlight my videos and grow the channel. So until next week, stay safe, keep building models and help support your local vendors. See you in the next one. Cheers. Ah, oh, damn it. This is why I don't like using 20 year old decals. Unless, you know, drama's a thing. For decals for.